Uh, thank you very much, Dieter. And, and I want to thank uh, Bev and Barry uh, for organizing this conference and for inviting me to, uh, to participate. Um, it's a bit of a responsibility to be the lead-off speaker. Um, we'll see how that goes. I, um, uh, th this is a panel on the question of um, uh, whether history suggests that the European Union must move toward a political union in order to uh, ensure the survival of the Euro. Um, I've rephrased the question slightly, um, as you can see up on the screen. I've rephrased this uh, question. Is political union necessary for the survival of the Euro? Um, and I will try to answer that question um, by reference to uh, past uh, examples that we have going back a century and a half, uh, past examples that we have of monetary unions among sovereign states. We have, of course, a lot of examples of monetary unions within sovereign states, uh, the United States of America, for example, um, but uh, relatively few uh, samples, uh, a very uh, relatively few examples of, of um, monetary unions uh, among formerly sovereign states. So the question is, what does the history of that sample tell us about the necessity or lack of necessity for political unions? Okay. So just a couple of definitions. So being an academic, I always start off with definitions. Um, uh, to be clear about what I mean by political union, I'm talking about genuine federation, not what is referred to as confederation, where sovereign states join together for certain purposes but are not recognized as a single political entity. A federation does put ultimate authority in a central uh, government, uh, and it does is represented uh, as a single political entity uh, in the world community. So that's what I mean by political union. Uh, just to be sure that we uh, understand. The important point I would make is that survival uh, can have very different meanings. Uh, and I, for simplicity, have two possible meanings here. Uh, a minimal meaning, which is simply that it doesn't die, uh, that it survives, that it has longevity. It doesn't necessarily function well, uh, but it doesn't go out of existence. Uh, a maximal definition of survival would be one that would uh, involve not just longevity, but actually uh, effective functioning, uh, smooth operation, uh, good health, if you will. Uh, and I want to make that distinction uh, clear because I think the answer to the question of whether political union is necessary depends very much on what we mean by survival. The historical evidence I want to refer to uh, is seven cases of monetary union among sovereign states. Three of them involved countries that were independent at the time the monetary union was formed. The Latin Monetary Union, which was started around 1865, I believe, of France, Switzerland, Belgium, and a group of other countries, including notably Greece, uh, which caused as much trouble then as it has lately. Um, the Scandinavian Monetary Union, which started, I believe, in 1873 or 1875, um, and the Belgian Luxembourg Economic Union, uh, which was created after World War I. We also have four cases of monetary unions that were started uh, during colonial times. Um, the um, CFA Franc Zone, East African Community, the East Caribbean Currency Area, and the West African Monetary Union. Uh, two of these actually broke up very quickly after independence. Uh, two of them still survive. So, if we start with the minimal definition of survival, uh, simply longevity, simply existing, no matter how poor the operation. Um, if we look at uh, the, the historical record, two of the, um, uh, uh, two of the seven are still in existence. It's the F.A. Franc zone in Africa and the East Caribbean currency area, and um, uh, continue to function uh, without any question of uh, a threat to their survival. Uh, one did function very well uh, for well over half a century uh, and probably would still be in existence if it weren't for the creation of the Economic and Monetary Union in Europe. Um, two survived for over half a century, which is not a bad record, 
uh, until they um, uh, uh, were terminated by the events of World War I. That's the Latin and Scandinavian monetary unions. Only two actually failed uh, uh, and did not meet the minimal standard of survival. Uh, and these were the East African Community and the West African Monetary Union, both of which uh, involved groups of British colonies. And once those colonies gained independence, they chose to go their separate ways, uh, and they um, uh, broke apart. Uh, the conclusion I draw from this is that if we define survival simply in terms of longevity, simply in terms of not going out of existence, uh, clearly this is possible without political union. But that's not a very demanding standard. So if we go to the maximal definition of survival, um, the, the question becomes a little more interesting. Um, again, the answer seems to be that no political union is not necessary, even to meet the maximal standard of survival, if we look at the historical record once again. Uh, three of the um, uh, uh, seven did not function effectively. Two, as I said, once co uh, the colonies were given independence and had a choice, they abandoned uh, the um, uh, monetary union. Uh, of the others, um, only the Latin monetary union did not function in a way that might be described as uh, robust health. Um, the, uh, uh, shortly after it was formed, uh, and what it involved, the Latin monetary union essentially involved um, an agreement to uh, standardize silver coinage within the group. Uh, and then uh, a decline in the price of silver in ensued. Uh, uh, several, several of the members started to depreciate the uh, silver content of their coins, uh, which began to flow into France, giving seigniorage to the outer uh, countries. This required measures to, uh, to, to, to deal with this, uh, and ultimately, uh, what they did was to suspend silver coinage, uh, and it became what the historians called a limping gold standard. Um, and um, ultimately, France forced the others to agree to a, an arrangement where uh, if any country were to leave the group, uh, the, they would have to um, redeem all their coinage uh, in gold or gold convertible paper. And um, uh, that uh, would have been very costly, and so the result was that uh, the, um, uh, the group held together until it formally uh, was um, uh, broken up by World War I and was formally dissolved in 1927. Um, the, um, uh, it, it, it would hardly be described as a um, monetary union that was functioning uh, in, in any smooth and healthy fashion. But the other four actually managed quite well. Um, the Scandinavian Monetary Union if it had not been for World War I, might well have continued uh, for quite some uh, longer time. Um, by 1914, coins were circulating freely among the three Scandinavian countries without any difficulty. Um, there was very little um, uh, question about the, um, uh, the effectiveness of that monetary union. Likewise, CFA Franc Zone today, the East Caribbean currency area today, both function without question. Um, and uh, the Belgian-Luxembourg arrangement also worked uh, very smoothly and, uh, until it was absorbed into uh, EMU. Uh, the, um, uh, it, it, this glance at history, admittedly <coughs> for the historians in the room, I admit it's very superficial, uh, nonetheless it seems to suggest that political union is not necessary uh, for a monetary union among sovereign states to function uh, well. The question is why? And my, my look at the historical evidence, uh, I realize that others might draw different conclusions, but my look at it suggests that one or the other, if not both, uh, of two conditions um, uh, accounts uh, uh, for the outcome. Uh, one possibility is that there's a local hegemon, a dominant power, uh, a dominant state in the group uh, with both the, the ability and the will to use instruments of coercion or uh, bribery, side payments and sanctions, carrots and sticks, uh, to hold the uh, arrangement together. This was well demonstrated by the Belgian Luxembourg Economic Union, where uh, clearly Belgium, which was about 20 times the size of Luxembourg, um, was quite prepared to uh, take the lead. Um, it was also in, uh, uh, well uh, uh, 
uh, illustrated by the distinction between what happened, the contrast between what happened to the two British colonial arrangements, uh, East African Community and West African Monetary Union on the one hand, and the French on the other. Because in the case of the CFA Franc Zone, when these countries became independent uh, in Central and, and, and West Africa, 15 of them uh, in all now, uh, when they became independent, France continued to underwrite the whole arrangement. And, uh, and that, of course, that was a major influence on uh, the um, willingness of the former colonies to continue the arrangement. Britain, on the other hand, with its uh, financial difficulties, was unwilling to play that role uh, when independence was granted, and, and so the countries instead preferred to go their own way. So a local hegemon clearly does um, uh, make a difference. The other is what I, for want of a better term, I call solidarity, which is a, um, a, a well-developed sense of common identity, of common destiny, um, grounded in a shared cultural background, reinforced by institutionalized uh, uh, ties of one kind or another. And that, as I suggest in the slide, is well demonstrated by the Scandinavian Monetary Union, by the um, Belgian Luxembourg Economic Union, uh, by the East Caribbean currency area. Uh, my conclusion from this historical evidence, limited though the sample is, my conclusion is that one or the other of these two conditions is necessary uh, for uh, healthy survival of a monetary union without political union. If both exist, uh, they are sufficient, in my opinion. So what are the lessons then for the euro? Um, I, I think it's clear from, uh, at least if you agree with my interpretation, uh, I think it's clear that uh, political union is not necessary, even for a maximalist definition of survival, is not necessary but it does mean that, the, that one or both of these two conditions uh, must be present, uh, either a local hegemon uh, or solidarity. Uh, now, when the uh, Maastricht Treaty was signed and the, um, uh, European community, the European Union was moving toward the creation of the Economic and Monetary Union, um, I admit that I was among those who were somewhat skeptical about whether uh, the euro would function well. I, I was not among those, Lars, I was not among those who thought that the euro would never come into existence. I, was, I fully expected it to come into existence, but I was skeptical about how well it might work. Um, but it was clear at the time uh, that, um, that one could make the argument that both of those conditions were in fact in presence. You did have a dominant monetary power, Germany, uh, which had the, certainly had the ability to, um, uh, to, to keep things going, uh, and for historical reasons, uh, was also quite willing to be a European Germany. Uh, and um, uh, at the same time, there was, of course, uh, the appearance of a sense of solidarity, of community, uh, of shared destiny, uh, certainly a well-institutionalized set of ties, mutual obligations, and the like. Uh, Experience has eroded some of this, uh, as we well know since the um, uh, crisis of European sovereign debt started three years ago. Uh, there has been some erosion of this. Germany has continued to play the hegemonic role, uh, but in a way that has actually provoked a great deal of hostility, uh, as we well know from the posters that are brandished in Athens and, and Cyprus and elsewhere. Uh, and uh, if anything, uh, there seems to be some slippage uh, in both um, the, the, the role of the hegemon and also the um, sense of solidarity in the community. Uh, my sense is that if these continue to erode, uh, it may well be necessary to think in terms of political union uh, uh, if one is concerned about achieving the maximalist definition of survival. Since I'm very skeptical that political union is out over the horizon, um, my guess is, therefore, that if the outcome is going to be more like the Latin monetary union uh, than of some of the more successful ones. Uh, a situation of minimal survival, of longevity, uh, but not necessarily very robust health. Uh, that um, uh, my, my summary of this in an article I published recently was, the euro will never succeed, the euro will never fail. It will never fail because of the fear 
of what would follow, uh, it will never succeed because, precisely because uh, of the lack of political union uh, uh, and the uh, erosion of the two conditions that are required for healthy survival without political union. Um, my sense is that, therefore, the euro is um, go uh, going to face a future of uh, some, not a, um, a, a sudden crisis, a heart attack that could cause the euro to, uh, to break up, uh, but rather something more like uh, a medical condition like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, at my age, I'm very sensitive to the idea of chronic <laughs> conditions. Um, um, occasional flare-ups, uh, but not robust health. Um, uh, given the, uh, the trend of the two important conditions necessary. And that, uh, I leave you with that prediction. Thank you very much.